we interrupt your regularly scheduled tech YouTube nonsense to bring you this breaking news. AMD is launching Threadripper. No, really. AMD and Lenovo have partnered up to launch Threadripper. Wait. Dang it. It's Threadripper Pro. In case you're Robin Williams in that movie where he doesn't know what year it is, AMD processors have been basically taking over the universe. AMD's got some really solid silicon. They've been improving and iterating. We're on third gen silicon at this point. Ryzen 3000 series CPUs, although Zen 3 is coming later this year. But yeah, AMD's launching Threadripper Pro. These CPUs have more in common with the AMD Epic CPUs than the Threadripper CPUs, but they kind of sit in the middle. And the first thing that you may be thinking if you're familiar with Epic and you're familiar with Threadripper is, wait, memory and PCIe lanes? Yes, yes. So you don't have overclocking, just like Epic, but you have workstation capabilities. So Threadripper for workstation, not a lot of people want to DIY a workstation. And so this is in partnership with Lenovo. You can't actually buy these processors yet in a retail box configuration. There are no gamer motherboards or anything like that. In fact, we heard rumors about workstation, WRX40 chipsets, basically in parallel with, uh, you know, the TRX40. But it does take an OEM partner to launch a platform like that. And also customer interest. Are people actually going to buy it? There were some early adopters with second gen Threadripper, but the industry wasn't ready for it. I showed that because there's bugs in Windows. I found the bugs. Well, I didn't, I mean, everybody found the bugs, but nobody could really identify what it was, but it's fine. That's just what happens when you have, you know, a breakthrough in technology that the software hasn't caught up yet. And that's gonna be a pattern that sort of repeats itself. So what, you know, how does Threadripper Pro fit in the equation and it really just comes down to qualification so you have you know vastly expensive software packages things like you know your autodesk packages and your really obscure simulation packages and things that are not really tolerant of hardware that may be a little uh let's say have teething issues like first or second gen products or products where the software life cycle is not quite as mature as it should be you need qualifications when you're working in the industry. Qualification meaning that someone has sat there and gone through every single thing you can possibly do in the program and validated it. And that is what a lot of the Threadripper Pro platform is going to bring. But you can't validate just a processor. If you look at the level one forums, if you look at you know our AMD Threadripper coverage, some motherboards work with 256 gigs of memory at 3200. Some motherboards work with 256 gigs of memory at 2666. The officially supported speed is 2666. The official max capacity on Ryzen Threadripper is 256 gigabytes. Well, with Threadripper Pro, one DIMM per channel, eight channels, that equals two terabytes. It could be four terabytes per socket, like on the AMD Epic platform, but no, the Threadripper Pro platform is two terabytes, and it's also limited to a single socket, but they've upped the TDP a little bit, 280 watts TDP. So launching today is the ThinkStation P620. It's a completely ordinary looking tower computer. It even has two five and a quarter inch bays, and it's packing a 3264 core. They're launching today, you can order them. So if you do professional work, and you don't want to get fired because it's like, you know, Bob, why, why can't you get your job done? Why can't you, you know, get the thing out? And it's like, well, it's because I built the computer and I'm having some trouble with the computer because I didn't pick exactly the right components. But, you know, with Lenovo, it's like, oh, I bought this Lenovo workstation, which is qualified specifically for blank and not really an issue. That's worth money. People will pay for that. Now, I don't have any hands-on benchmarks yet. But I do have the W3175X 28 core workstation, and I'm working on the W3275, which is a, not an overclocking Xeon platform, 28 cores. And I think it's taken until now for AMD to get that OEM partner on board because they really have taken the world by storm. So four CPUs are launching today, the 64 core, the 32 core, a 16 core, and a 12 core. The details about those are on screen, but this is a, a little different from the Threadripper lineup where you've got 24, 32, and 64 cores. Ryzen Threadripper Pro processor in the workstation lineup. It's basically 12 or 16 cores. And the reason for that is software licensing. Some of these software packages charge you by the core. So if you get the 12 processor, yeah, it's got the single thread speed and it's got the, you know, <laughs> the massive amounts of cash, but 
12. 100, 128 PCIe lanes and two terabytes of memory capacity. So that is optimized to make the software cost less. Note to software publishers, if you guys would stop being terrible human beings and make it okay from a licensing perspective, if you've got a 32 core processor and you just go in the BIOS and disable 16 or 24 of those cores to make it all kosher on the license, that should be accepted. That should be legally required under the law. But you know, good luck getting a lawmaker to understand the nuances of that. But in the tested applications for the stuff that I reviewed from AMD, ooh, it's a bloodbath. Even if you're running dual platinum 8280s, yeah, those pro it's insane cost relative to what the Lenovo workstation costs. It's, it's a bloodbath and it's not good for Intel. Today was not a good day for Intel shareholders. Yeah, if you're crazy enough to be rocking a dual Xeon 8280 for your workstation, one single socket is 28% faster, 37% faster in Creo. 28% faster is just, it's mind blowing. You use 3D Studio Max? Well, that's 27% faster than a dual Xeon 8280. Also, Epic Games, we were doing our own Unreal testing on Threadripper, and that was one of the things that would just sort of scratch the limits of the 256 gig memory limitation on Ryzen Threadripper. So it is nice that you can now run your, you know, Unreal stuff with two terabytes of memory if, if you want. That means you've got LR DIMMs, registered DIMMs. Of course, it still works with unregistered DIMMs, unregistered ECC DIMMs as well. But you can also do like the new fancy 3DS LR DIMMs. All the server stuff is fully qualified on this platform. So that memory capacity, it probably would work with four terabytes if you could do two DIMMs per channel, but they've opted for one DIMM per channel and a maximum supported memory speed of 3200. Oh, I'll also mention uh, two other things that they added to the platform. Uh, one is the pro manageability, like remote management. So Intel has vPro and vPro gets a little bit of a bad rap because, you know, it's a black box inside your machine, a black box binary. You don't know what it's doing. Theoretically, it could, you know, allow an attacker into your system and you would never know because it is running outside the operating system. It's running at a very low level inside the processor. Well, AMD has added that same technology. You know, they've always had the, the secure platform processor. There were, there were kind of some promises about opening that up, but a lot of that's proprietary and AMD doesn't have the license rights to be able to do that. So I'm not gonna fault them too much for not being able to open up the PSP uh, on existing processors, but this adds that management capability. And for all of the people in the open source world that sort of complain about the black box binary running on their system, a lot of companies actually want that functionality. So if you want to play ball with a company that's going to order 500 of these workstations or 1,000 of these workstations, they want to automate the management. And uh, to do that, you need that kind of functionality. There's something similar on servers, IPMI. It's the same kind of an idea, but it's a little bit more standardized and it's a little bit more open, a little bit more web managed. This sort of bridges the gap between nothing and a full on IPMI because the cost of a full on IPMI is also a bit high. So maybe, of course, we've also seen, you know, workstation-ish Epic motherboards like this motherboard from Tyann. You can run an Epic workstation, but AMD frowns upon it and it's because of that whole qualification thing. There has been untold hours sunk into qualifying Threadripper Pro where you don't really get that with Epic. And even some of the stuff on the Intel side, it's like, oh, you know, Intel has a ton of software engineers. Well, and the Intel people make mistakes too. Things like the P4500 SSD. We have so much connectivity in Threadripper Pro, 128 PCIe lanes that, uh, you know, when Intel was building things like the P4500, they thought, I think that, oh, when the CPUs are so fast, that you can actually you know, have a CPU that keeps up with an array of the P4500s, these will be long since obsolete. Well, no, that day is today. I mean, these, these drives are designed a few years ago. They're still on the market, but it seems like there are actual hardware bugs and hardware errata in SSDs like the P4500 when the server is so fast, it has no problem keeping up with all of these SSDs. We've seen that in you know arrays as small as just four of these P4500 drives and you get into weird situations with Intel support where they're like, well, can we, will you sign an NDA? You wanna just, you wanna cash refund for the drives? You know, cause they're still under warranty for like two, three more years. So it's a really odd situation in terms of like hardware qualification. These things with their insanely high single core clock speed, which we have not really seen in server platforms until the last generation or two from Intel and their insane PCIe connectivity and their insane memory capacity, Infinity Fabric really is paying off a lot of dividends here. Yeah, it's not been completely trouble free, but 
those problems go away. You can hire software engineers. You can hire talent to help you qualify these platforms and put it together into a solid, reliable workstation. And that's what the partnership between Lenovo and AMD is for these workstations. It gives you a little bit more assurance than you would get ordinarily, you know, otherwise just putting together uh, a series of components. So I, I do question a little bit AMD's decision to not make the Pro CPUs available to DIYers, and I do hope that we see more OEMs than just Lenovo adopt this. But for now, Lenovo's got the first mover advantage on the P620 workstation and Threadripper Pro. So there you go. If you want a Threadripper Pro workstation turnkey solution, just get out the credit card and order the machine. And the cost savings is substantial over the Intel counterparts. I feel like Intel is going to have to respond with price cuts, or you know, I mean, we just got the. CPUs like the W3275, they, they just entered general availability a few months ago. And yeah, I mean, $4,000 for the 28 core, and now we're looking at a workstation cost on this Lenovo P620. I mean, in terms of raw compute, about the only thing left that the Xeon platform can do that uh, the AMD platform can't do is AVX512. And, you know, Linux creator Linus Torvalds had some choice things to say about AVX 512 recently because it turns out there's a lot of variants of AVX 512. That the Venn diagram of all the different AVX 512s, not really uh, super overlapping. And uh, Linus Torvalds also commented that, you know, some people are using AVX 512 for uh, memory copy routines, which maybe it's not great in the grand scheme of things. I digress. It's a whole other conversation. Two terabytes of memory, a workstation, a truly workstation professional class platform. I was also really happy to see that AMD partnered with uh, Jellyfish Pictures for multimedia and media production because that is one application where people want the horsepower and they want the horsepower of AMD Ryzen Threadripper. And some of the work that I've done in the visual effects industry, they're like, oh, we really like those Threadrippers, but I don't, I mean, can we, can we, can we just buy them? And it's like, well, I mean, you can buy them from Puget Systems, but they're like, oh, can we, can we get it from like a, a major OEM? And now Lenovo, Lenovo's on fire. So yeah, you can get it from a major OEM now. Nice job, Team AMD. I wonder this is level one. It's an exciting time to be in need of a lot of compute horsepower. I'm signing out and I'll see you later.